Wesleyans have been serving Christ in Sierra Leone for almost 100 years. Since 1889, God has used Wesleyan missionaries in developing and strengthening a growing church. Today, missionaries are used in assisting pastors in church planting and evangelism, training leaders through theological education, meeting the medical and physical needs of people through hospitals and dispensaries, and in support roles. Mike and Vicki Lair serve at Kamakui Hospital, where Mike is building and maintenance director and Vicki is a part-time nurse. We got Uncle Mo's radiator all taken care of, so they're they're ready to go down the road, ready to head to Freetown after a long weekend here for the Mission Council. Good. What have you been up to? Went over and talked to Janelle this morning. Just had a really good time fellowshipping with her and talking, talking girl talk <laughs> about them getting married and everything. It's neat that to think that they met here like we did in Zambia and that they're getting everything all ready for their wedding. Fun to talk to her. It brings back a lot of memories and a lot of exciting days when we were trying to date on the mission field and mm -hmm. trying to inform our families back home. And just the excitement of getting married is great. I am so tickled at the service we had yesterday at Kateri. time here it is just May they have 350 people for the opening service it's hard to believe that at Christmas time when 10 people came and said can you please come and have service that, that God would just pour it on of course the 350 many were visitors but really the congregations about 150 now after just what six, seven months, and it's gone. So neat to see how, how good the church looked yesterday, that, you know, they've gotten the building up and they've gotten it painted and they've cleaned up the ground so much around it and everything and had everything looking so good. And it's been exciting to see how the people have gotten behind it so much and have done so much work themselves. And you've put in a lot of hard work and have really encouraged them to work and all, but it's They've really gotten behind it. It's something that they wanted to do. sat down with my carpenter Momo and a couple other missions people and we, we really got to talking about Kateri and how that God has blessed it. You know, in the Bible they talk, Paul was talking about 
you know, somebody watering and somebody planting, and then somebody finally seeing the harvest come about. And uh, as Momo recounted the days of Dr. Frank Birch going out to the village and gathering a handful of people together and, and them starting a church, Kateri was kind of different. It just it took off a little bit and then it just died. And then a few years later, another missionary went out and they started a church and the timing just wasn't right and they just they just left it go by the wayside. And then even the Catholics went in and tried to start a building in the Muslims and it just didn't seem like religion really was going to get off the ground or Christianity was going to get off the ground. And so everyone just left it. It was one of those places that they gave up on. Then all of a sudden at Christmas time, here are some of the people who had listened to all these people down through the ages and had been saved, finally became adult Christians, and they came and begged for a church. And I think those kids that heard down through the years now are adults. They came, and so to have 80 on Christmas morning, just tremendous. And then to keep climbing like they have, it just... Uh, just amazing to see how the people are changed. I would say Kateri is the most exciting work I've ever seen to have you know, 150 people come regularly every Sunday, 25 walk two or three miles to come in and just to have an exciting church and then to have 350 for the for the opening service in the new building and and to have what they call the mommy queen, the lady who's in charge of all the military men's wives and and to have one of the ministers come and from the government just to come to open the church, that was exciting for them to have a parade and a big meal and for the chief to come give his blessing and provide some gifts. That's exciting. The town is headed for Jesus Christ. I think of months ago before we came to Sierra Leone, my goal as a missionary for this term was to start a village church. And the Lord dropped this church in my lap. I didn't have to go out and search for it. They came begging for a church. And here it's just like eight months into our term. And already our, the goal that we really set for this term is nearly accomplished. The church is there. The people are solid. And the work is going before. Just God is moving abundantly. And then to think of the rest of the district, the fact that they've built five churches in just about two months' time, because it's dry season, but all the churches have come of age in this just a short time. Um, God is doing great things in Sierra Leone. I'm just excited about that. It's really neat to think how the Lord has worked out all of our areas of ministry here for us since we've come. It's been neat for me to be involved in the in the doctor's clinic as a PA. I got that degree in, in Zambia, I kind of used it, and it was really helpful to me, you know, but here I'm really using it, and I'm working as a PA in the doctor's clinic and seeing patients, and it's been really fulfilling, and I'm, I'm just really glad that the Lord's worked that out so that I can do that, and it's left so much of my time free to be a mom to Joshua and to be here with him and to really feel like I'm... I'm raising him the way that God wants us to, and and I'm free to to have time to be a homemaker, and and you know I can I can train him and spend time with him, and I have time to to feel like I'm really being a wife and a mom, and then the the work at the hospital is really just enough to to fulfill my desire and and to feel like I've got a ministry there and all. And it's, it's been really neat to think that we're in Zambia, we didn't even have doctors, and here I've got two that are right there where I can, you know, call on them and work with them, and it's been really fulfilling and exciting. You know, and it may not be that the Lord will keep me there, you know, I may have to start working in the hospital some and all, but that'll be a part of, part of the ministry and, and a be able to use my training there as well and that's exciting to see what you know how the Lord's going to work out these days as as nursing staff gets shorter and that kind of thing but it's neat to see that God can use us in so many ways in different areas of ministry. No really we've just our time here has been blessed. I think of all the work that we're involved in 
and how that at home work is separated really from your ministry. When I, uh, when I worked for Andy's, I had eight hours a day where I did my job in heating and refrigeration and then my church work came different, but everything meshes together here. And everything I do at the shop, I have people come all the time who, who need help from the town. And just as a chance to have a, a just a spiritual ministry with the, with the mechanical things that I need to fix. And just the Lord has really helped me to learn to work on generators, to work on some of the cars that we have here, and the water pumps and those things. I, I shake my head sometimes the things that we can make work here because God's hand of blessing is on it and because the piece of equipment is vital to the ministry of the hospital that if I tried to, to fix things the way we do here at back home, they wouldn't work, they wouldn't operate. But God's hand is on mechanical things. Um, just to see the vehicles operate the way they have and the, the way the generators are doing well. God has blessed us with parts at just the right time. And uh, the place is running smoothly, it's holding together. And to see that, wow. Well, Sometimes the work that I do, it's, it's hard to realize you're serving the Lord, changing the oil. But it's exciting to be able to peek into surgery and know that surgery is possible because the electric plant's working the way it is and the equipment's working the way it is because of the maintenance. And the gifts that God has given me are being used really for the furtherance of the kingdom. So God, has, God has blessed us. There's no question. I've, Probably this term as far as service, the actual being able to serve it, to perform services for the people, for the mission, and be effective um, is much greater than I've seen it at, at, as a gospel core worker. But I'm thankful that the Lord used the gospel core experience to just really to wet my palate to draw me into missions. It's, it's been a good time. Good seven months we've, or eight months we've had here. You know, it's it's neat too to think that even though we're here working and we're doing all these things, that we're part of something that's so much bigger than just us right here. That the people that are back home that are praying for us and lifting us up and supporting us financially are a real part of our ministry here too. And I think that. You know, we, we couldn't be here, we couldn't be doing what we're doing for God if it weren't for those people back home who love us and, and care for us. And I'm so thankful for, for their prayers for us and the way that they're lifting us up and encouraging us. And the letters that we get, you know, and it's been neat to see how we've gotten letters, you know, from even from people that we don't even know that have come to us in times when we've been kind of down, you know, and they've had just the right thing to say to us to encourage us and that, that makes them a part of what we're doing here and, and meshes our ministry with, with them and makes them a part of it. You know, it's not just what we're doing in, in the medical work and in you and the mechanical work and, and then in the, the work that we do in the churches and all that but that it's something that's so much bigger. It's, it's so neat to see how God uses all of us in, in our own special ways to, to further His kingdom and to build the, the church of God throughout the world. Sometimes when you're here, you know, you just kind of... Life goes on, there's always plenty of work to do, and people are always falling out of trees or, or in accidents or farm accidents or fights or something, and the workload can get heavy. And how easy it is just to, to look at what's before you in the day and say, ah, oh my. And just to, sometimes it's easy to think we're here all alone. But then there are the days when you, you open the mail and get somebody like Mrs. Turnipseed who says, I have prayed for you, and this certain day I really prayed for you. And you go back and you look and it was some kind of troubled day. Or the days where you've just had all you can take and 
as Popeye says, I, I've had all I can stands, I can't stands no more. Mm -hmm. And then you come home and you find that somebody's delivered mail and here's somebody that said, you know, we're really praying for you. We know you have difficult days, but we're praying for you and it helps. Or just the folks who, who send a letter and inside the letter they send a package of Kool-Aid. It's a 10, 15 cent item, but how, what a great joy that brings to Joshua and just how much excitement that brings and how it ties us back to the folks back home. And just ex it's neat to think that we're part of such a big family who, who loves us and they love us because of Jesus Christ. And then we can be here as their ambassadors, loving the people. Really in Jesus' name, but in the name of the family, we come and, and bring, our, bring our gifts, our support, our services, and just show them the love of Christ. I just, just can't thank the Lord enough for bringing us here and the way He's worked out His call in our lives. Well, looks like the coffee's all done. Time to get back to work. Okay, I'm glad you could come up. Okay, I'll be down at the shop with you later. Okay, honey. Okay. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye, Delphi. Steve and Kathy Ellen are serving in Freetown where Steve is the mission business manager. Well, Kathy, we've been here almost 10 years now, and uh, I get to thinking about it. Sometimes I wonder if what I've done is counted and I look back over the day-to-day -day thing of going into town doing business and working in government offices and going back a dozen times for something that seems like it could have been done at one time and struggling in uh, the accounting and the book work and uh, it looks a little bit frustrating and I wonder what fruit it's borne but I think the thing that keeps me going out here is the fact that two years ago we were able to get two or three good men working for us that I was able, I've been able to uh, disciple, talk to one on one, work with them day after day, and it looks like there are people who are committed to working for the mission, and more than just the mission, but for the church in this country. And that's what really gives me the courage and it gives me the, the assurance that the time I've spent here has been for not, hasn't been for anything. Uh, if it wasn't for that, sometimes I doubt myself, but I think Brahma and Abu are going to be people who are going to be real church people, church men. They're going to be good laymen and well grounded in the Christian faith and they're going to be uncompromising in their standards and convictions on the kind of life they're going to live and the way they represent the Lord to their own people. And uh, that's hard to find here. So, you know, when we first came we were praying that the Lord would give us people who we could train that way. And I've wondered why they didn't come until the last two years, two to three years, we, uh, before we actually met the people that we felt like the Lord had given us to take up some of our work. Okay, I realize that uh, Brahma and Abu are not the only fruits of our work because I also know that as we were doing those menial tasks in the day-to-day -day drudgery in town and in the office that uh, we were supporting other works up country. And uh, 
obviously in the past 10 years the church has grown tremendously and especially in the past three to four years the leadership development and the administrative development the giving in the church the growth in numbers everything has really been on the upswing and my ministry is a support ministry and that's what God called us to do and I think that's I think the Lord is blessing our ministry. He promised He would before we came. And I believe that He did. I have to accept that on faith, even though sometimes uh, when I'm in town and ready to bite someone's head off in an office, <laughs> I have to remind myself the Lord called me here to do this and He's going to bless and fulfill His promises. Our ministry won't go unfruitful. Well, when we first came, I didn't really know what I could do to, to assist you and how I could be of help. Of course, when we came ten year, almost ten years ago, the children were small and it took all of my time to be with them. Um, and running the house takes so much. You have to go down and buy your own meat and clean it and cut it and uh, grind it if you want ground beef. And if you want good bread, you have to make your own. And just everything that you make starts from scratch. It's not easy like opening cans of things and it just takes, if you want to prepare a decent meal for your family, it takes all morning in the kitchen. So it just takes a tremendous amount of time just to live and like when you need to do things in town to help us out like just getting fuel, sometimes you spend a week or two weeks just getting enough fuel for our, for our vehicle to run, for our generator. Um, just to live. We waste a lot of our time just trying to get those things um, that we need. Also, when we moved to Freetown to take on this position as business manager, I guess the things I helped you most with were uh, some business in town, uh, having to go to the post office every single day in town, and uh, some offices you have to go back time and time again before you get what, you, what you're after. And sometimes five and six times you have to go back to one office, and that takes a lot of time. And it's a lot of humbug. So I helped you in those areas. Going to the bank, you don't just go put your check in and collect cash. It takes sometimes an hour and a half, two hours just to get the cash you want. So if I could, if, when I can do those things for you, then you can be doing the other more important things that I can't do. Also, I help you type some letters sometimes, even though I make some mistakes. And um, typing letters, and I'm, I've learned to work on the computer a little bit, not a lot, but... I suppose the most important thing that I do to assist Steve is to bring him a cup of coffee when he needs it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Along with his morning coffee. Um, the children enjoy school at Kabbalah. They go to boarding school. And uh, Mark will be in 8th grade. Michael will be in 6th grade. And Aaron will be in 2nd grade. And they enjoy school. They have learned to be independent. In a lot of ways, they come home and we learn to live together again. And they're independent and I'm ready to tell them what to do. And it doesn't always work because they're used to being their own boss. But we adjust together as a family and learn to live together. Uh, we have this, we have a 10 day blow time in October. We have a 10 day blow time in March and in Christmas holiday. And uh, we can go up and see them maybe uh, two, or two, two or three times during the year. So as a family, uh, I suppose we're not the normal family because uh, our, we're living our, our lives with our children young and not with us most of the year and they're home all summer and we're constantly adjusting adjusting to them leaving them adjusting to school adjusting to living without us coming home adjusting to being home and living together again and uh, but at school they have a security Mark has gone to the same school for since first grade and Michael also Darren also. So they have gained a lot uh, in their character and personality that a lot of children at home don't. And it's a lot of pluses. 
And for the negatives, I don't know. We'll have to see that in the future. We trust the Lord for it. The Lord promised me that if we'll seek first His kingdom, that these things, other things, will be added unto us. And for those things, I prayed for the children as teenagers to be deeply committed Christians, for them to find their right vocation in life when they're older, and uh, to find the right marriage partner if that's the Lord's will. So living here has been hard in a lot of ways just because of that separation. But we trust the Lord. We leave our children in their care. And they've had a lot of good times and experiences that if they lived in America, they wouldn't have. So we're thankful for that. We praise the Lord for the way He has helped us grow in our, in our character uh, by the experiences we've gone through, which if we lived at home, we would have the same, you know, maybe different experiences, but every one of us as Christians are growing and stretching and... Uh, so we're thankful for those experiences and for living here. Living cross-culturally is not easy. It's one of the hardest things we've ever done. And But the Lord has helped us. We have many friends, African friends. Uh, we still will never understand all the culture, no matter how long we live here. But it's it's been good. It's been rewarding and it's been worthwhile. The Lord has shown us our gifts um, by living here, and I know when we go home, we may not be called upon to use those same gifts. He will have other areas and other work for us to do, but he's helped us. It's really been good. Steve does very well in his work. He really leaves a testimony where he goes when he goes to these offices, when he speaks to the government officials and government ministers. Uh, they know he's with a mission. And the Lord gives him opportunities to testify to these men in high places. They know what we represent. When Abu goes into the offices, they know what he represents. And he has their respect. And so the Lord is bearing fruit through our lives, even though sometimes we can't always see it. He promised he would do that, and we trust him for it. Really, there are so many important things that go to make up the success of a missionary's term of service and probably the most important is the body life which includes our home family and our mission family on the field and I'm absolutely certain that safety successes in our work when we're so inadequate for tasks that we try to perform whether it's in business or mechanics or whatever I believe those successes are the direct result of prayer of people at home who are concerned about our work and sometimes I wonder and and really I get to reflecting and think that I, sometimes I really do take for granted things that happen here in such a successful way in the work. Really, they're things that if I tried at home, I don't, I don't think would come out so well, but the Lord gives us a special blessing over here. And He has a way of making things work and a way of going before us. I think He can do this for everyone, but I think for some reason I think He especially blesses on mission fields in going before us and preparing the way for us. And I don't think that can happen just because we came here. I think it has to happen because people sent us and they're supporting us. And I don't mean just financial support, that's important, but I believe the prayer support and the understanding of the need that they are fulfilling and praying for us is what is the most important and what makes it successful. And I'm sure I don't tell our home family, our church family enough how much I appreciate them. But I'm just as sure that we would not have been able to do the work we've done here in the past years without their unwavering prayer, their earnest prayer, and their care for us, their love for us, and most of all, their love for God's work.
We are thankful for Wesleyan churches like yours, who are joining hands with other Wesleyans and supporting and praying for the Ullams and the Layers. Let's continue to trust God that He will use these two families in accomplishing His will in Sierra Leone. <laughs>